Researchers have found more than 7 million people are living with uncorrectable vision loss. 20% of all people aged 85 and older experience permanent vision loss, and low vision can directly affect a person's quality of life. Low vision expert and educator Mike Wood is here to offer his solutions for low vision sufferers to live independently. Hey there, Mike. How are you? Hey, good morning, Aubrey. Doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. First of all, explain for our audience what exactly is low vision. Sure thing. So low vision is actually an uncorrectable eye condition. So, you know, you got to think of things like normally would go to the eye doctor and would get glasses or contact lenses. So low vision is something that cannot be corrected with surgery, with eyeglasses, uh, contact lenses, anything like that. So oftentimes a lot of the terminology people are familiar with are some of the things I have here up on this um, banner, which are macular degeneration, glaucoma, cataracts, diabetic retinopathy, things like that are more the typical terms. Yeah, okay, those are some things I've definitely heard about, and those can really affect your quality of life. You think about it, we use our eyes for everything. Absolutely, and you know, and that's the thing, oftentimes the people start realizing that they're having issues when, you know, they can't have it corrected, and then they say, well, I can't maybe do things like read a book anymore. Uh, we get a lot of people that are looking to, you know, read the newspaper, read their mail. What if you're into hobbies? You know, I've got something here showing like a bingo card. So it's something as easy as, you know, playing the card game or bingo or knitting or threading a needle. Uh, you know, your daily activities start to really kind of be impaired by your vision. And I'm sure people who suffer from some of these different conditions can be discouraged and frustrated. Do you have any tips for folks who may be experiencing what you call low vision? Absolutely. So one of the first things I want to say is diet and exercise are super important. You know, there's a statistic out there saying that 90% of those with diabetic, you know, related eye diseases actually could correct that if they had, you know, kind of done things prior to getting there to that point. So what we often recommend is, you know, lighting is super important, magnification and contrast. So one of the things I do want to show you is, you know, you're looking at, say, a newspaper article, and I'm going to come close to the camera here. Sure. And this page here is actually uh, a newspaper showing you the weather for different cities. And if I zoom in, you'll notice I can make that larger. Oh, wow. But also, the really cool thing is when I do that, I can also change the contrast. And watch how that text just kind of pops more mm -hmm. when you change that contrast. Oh, so for different lighting situations. So, yeah, so your different lighting and whatnot. And that text is extremely small on the newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, so the magnification lighting and contrast and then as you move on you know if you realize so that's something that's great to go to the grocery store maybe to the shopping reading clothing tags things like that but at home your eyes may fatigue at the end of the day so you might want something that can actually scan and read things to you so this is a product uh, called the compact 10 by optilec and this will actually scan and read things out loud to you um, and then something like this which is the clear view go and this will allow you to actually this folds up and you can take it from work to school to home and you can magnify uh, anything underneath that. You can also do distance. So oftentimes we have people in maybe senior centers that wanna look out their window and look at their bird feeder or you wanna check and see who's coming up your driveway throughout the day. And these devices can do that for you as well. Oh, wow, yeah, that's really interesting. Great aids there. Now, what is wearable high definition technology? Yeah, so there's some really cool things out now that are wearable, and the technology has come so far. So we have uh, one product that I've worked with in the past that I've recommended a lot is the Geordi, and it's kind of named after the Star Trek uh, person, you know, gentlemen out there that if you watch Star Trek, you'd know. And it's a wearable that you can wear similar to a pair of glasses. It has a camera in it, and it will allow you to magnify and zoom in, zoom out. So if you have a hard time watching TV, or maybe you're going to watch your grandkids play soccer, and you want to zoom in and watch them on the field. So something like that. Uh, and it's getting smaller and smaller. There's other technology out there that's more, you know, closer to the size of, you know, glasses or sunglasses as well. And I'm sure there's lots of different needs. What about for driving? Is there specific technology for that? Yeah, so you have to go to a doctor for that. And there are actually optics for that. Great question. So there's actually uh, monocular type things that they can attach to your glasses that will help you drive. So it's almost like a binocular type of setup that's actually mounted to the lens in your glasses, and that will help with driving. Um, so, you know, oftentimes you recommend, you wanna, you know, ask for a low vision specialist when you're going to your doctor and ask what's out there, because oftentimes the doctors may not be aware of everything, you know, it's keep up on all the technology is uh, time consuming for sure. 
Mike, this is really interesting, and it's great to know there are options and, and helpful tools to help people still have a great quality of life, even if their vision isn't 2020 anymore. Appreciate you joining us. I'm going to point everyone to learn more about living with low vision. You can visit Vispero.com.